um, I'm Naisha, I'm one of the organizers of this walk, and I want to thank you all for coming out. The support is absolutely incredible, and on the walk, I almost wanted to cry seeing all of these people that are so passionate about this movement. Um, but we wanted to start off this program by introducing the members of the Multi-Faith Coalition. Could you guys please come up to the podium, please? Thank you. If there's any clergy in the audience that aren't accounted for, please feel free to come up to the stage now. We want you up here. It's just, we missed you out in the crowd. So, friends, my name is Kelly. I'm here on behalf of the Multi-Faith Coalition with numerous of my beloved colleagues behind me here. I want to invite you into a call and response with me. Your part in this response is to say, none of us are free until all of us are free. Can you do that with me? None of us are free until all of us are free. None of us are free until all of us are free. All right, you got it. You got it. When I gesture to you like this, you're going to do that. They're going to back me up. All right. <laughs> Friends, with a fierce and terrible grief, we come to this hour together. None of us are free until all of us are free. Grief at the murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Aubrey, Tony McDade, and far, far, far too many others. In anguish over the killing of black lives, our determination is to act on and affirm a simple truth by coming together. None of us are free until all of us are free. We are hardly the first to affirm it. Our voices only echo those of Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, and Harriet Tubman, of Langston Hughes, Medgar Evers, Fannie Lou Hamer, and Martin Luther King, honoring these and other black prophets unheeded in their own days. We join with them. None, None of us are free until all of us are free. None of us are free so long as any of us must live with the fear that our children or our parents will not come safely home to us. None of us are free until all of us are free. None of us are free so long as any of us cannot ride in a car or walk on the street or sit in our own homes without the prospect of being targeted for harassment or assault or death. None of us are free until all of us are free. None of us are free until all of us have the freedom simply to be as we are, to have the beauty and the power of our voices and in our bodies, in our cultures and in our traditions, appreciated and celebrated instead of being denigrated and interrogated. None of us are free until all of us are free. Faith and science both affirm the common origin and the shared destiny of all humankind. The cinder ash of stars, blessed with eyes to see and ears to hear, hearts that beat and break and love. We are bound together in a seamless garment of mutuality. Our fates conjoined in ways not even death can break. None of us are free until all of us are free. Because black lives matter, but our nation keeps failing to act like they do. We are here today. For the white folks here right now, we who inherited the privilege of a system that largely works for us at everyone else's expense, let us particularly remember that at the banquet table of justice, the hungriest must eat first. So let us say together one more time, none of us are free until all of us are free. Thanks. Good afternoon again. Uh, 
I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce one of the organizers of this event, Amanda Ramos. former student at Beverly High School. I'm here today only, not only as an administrator for this walk, but here to speak for those innocent lives of black men and women lost, to, lost due to sheer excessive force used by police officers and inhumane brutality. To me, signing many petitions, spreading many different types of awareness, posting all over social media still wasn't enough. It, was, it just wasn't enough. Seeing everything going on in the news, seeing our country literally getting turned upside down really hit us. It wasn't enough to just stay silent. So my partner, Naisha Tadis, and I came together with this amazing idea of walking in remembrance of the black lives lost. We decided to not only fight for what's right, but to also fight for justice and equality. The lack of equality in this country is absurd. It's the hard truth. Let's not forget to mention the amount of discrimination all across America. Growing up, we've all learned in school the history of cruelty to the black community. Seeing that as a child was crazy to me. I really couldn't understand it. My brain couldn't and will never till this day process how a human being can be so cruel to a person due to the simple fact of their skin color. Flesh. The flesh that we all have. Since when was skin color supposed to matter? It's so unfair. It feels like not enough is being done. Black people aren't getting the rec recognition they need and deserve. They've been fighting for nearly 400 years and still continue on fighting to this day just to get treated equally like everyone else. It breaks my heart knowing that people fight for equality every day and still don't get what they're fighting for. Equality should be for every race, every skin color, every gender, etc. People shouldn't be judged by their appearance. People need to start looking at their hearts because this is what truly defines a person. Stop being so quick to judge by just looking at their skin color. Get to actually know the person. We all breathe the same air and, sh and we all shed the same blood. A person of color shouldn't have to be afraid to go on a regular jog like everyone else and get shot like Mr. Aubrey, who died at the age of 25 years old. A young man who had no idea that his life would get stripped by two white men. A man who had so much potential and such a great future ahead of him. A person of color shouldn't get shot due to the simple fact of what they're wearing. A person of color shouldn't be afraid of simply going to the store. It's gotten to a point that people of color, even just simply breathing, get hated on. No matter what they do, they get hated on for no reason. People already assume they're monsters just because of their skin. But that's what our world has come to. Everyday innocent people are dying, families are crying, and nothing is being done about it. At the end of the day, no matter the amount of justice we get, we will never be able to bring those precious lives back to Earth. Not all deaths get documented. There are just a few that happen to get documented. George Floyd, a black man, was brutally killed by an officer. That officer kept his knee on that poor man's neck for a total of eight minutes and 46 seconds. The entire time, he knew exactly what he was doing. That there is just what blows my mind. He was one of the few people that got documented. That documentation triggered millions across the nation to fight for not only justice for him, but for equality to all. These, those four officers don't have a heart Excuse me. Those four officers don't define the rest of the ones in America. We shouldn't let the bad cops define all those who actually have a heart and not protect us. This war will never end until we get peace, until we get equality. Why not just all come together and love each other like Christ himself has? Let's all learn to truly love one another for who we are. for giving me the opportunity to speak. I would now like to introduce Mayor Cahill to say his words. Thank you, Amanda. Amanda, that was amazing. Uh, I, I want to make sure that I, I've got a few things to share with you, but the first thing I want to do is I want to thank our elected officials locally for being here. Not all of them could be because of work commitments. And if I miss anybody, please raise your hand because it matters to all of us that if you're able to be here, that you are. And, and we're grateful for that and for your commitment to make this community the best it can be. So from our city council, I know because I've seen 
Councillor Kathleen Feldman, Estelle Rand, Stacey Ames, Scott Hausman, and Julie Flowers. Thank you all. And again, please, any council, if there's a council I'd missed, everybody shout it out because we need to know. School committee members who are here with us today, John Milady, Lorinda Visnick, Kim Coelho, Rachel A. Bell, and Kelly Ferretti. Thank you all. And many, many members of our school department, including our superintendent, Dr. Trochik, and a lot of our administrative team, thank you all. So I have to say thank you to everybody here. And I have to say, this is beautiful. Just looking out here, this is absolutely beautiful. We have, yeah, you know, I know that this is born out of outrage. And I see this outrage being channeled as determination and love and brotherhood and sisterhood, and that's incredible. So please know, Please know that black lives matter here in Beverly. Black lives matter. Black lives matter to me. Black lives matter to the tens of thousands of wonderful, loving people in this community. And black lives matter, and I know this, because I work with them every day, Black Slide Matter in this community in Beverly to our brothers and sisters in our police department who work hard every day for all of us. So, so to, you, to you kids, I see a lot of kids here and a lot of young people who probably wouldn't want to be called kids. But to our kids and our young people, for our black kids, for our other kids of color, and for our white kids. We can and we're going to do better for our children of color and our young people of color because that's gonna make a better Beverly and a better society for all of our young people. So we're, we're going to, we've already started and we're gonna engage in all the conversations that matter. We'll listen, we'll share, we'll learn. And specifically, we'll act when action is needed. So specifically, a lot of you know that I pledged the other day to, to conduct a review of our police department's um, policy on the use of force. I, I also expressed I expressed that, that our policy is strong, our officers train hard, they work hard, and yet it's still appropriate and it's now appropriate to review it. We'll review it completely, we'll share, we'll engage in that, and where there's an opportunity and a need for any updates and improvements in that policy, we'll make them. So we'll work with you together on that in the coming weeks. And more than that, we are committed, and I know it from, from what I'm seeing here today, and I know it from all the people that have been working in recent days and really going back. But going forward, we'll do the hard work together. We'll do it as a community, and we'll make that difference that we all know is so overdue, and we'll get to that point where everybody in this community feels and is safe in their daily lives, and where everybody in, the, in this community can take advantage of opportunities for the life that they hope for, for themselves and their loved ones. That's our, that's our goal, our focus, that's our responsibility. Right now, what I'd like to do is, we, we tried to get our hands on a Black Lives Matter flag by today. We ordered one, it's not in yet. But Naisha, Amanda, Toby, and Malia, who I've seen up here, and Paul Malumba and Grace Bell, who've also been part of organizing this. <laughs> yeah. I see you there, Paul, thank you. Paul was the very first person to reach out to me last week and say, we want to do something meaningful, can you help us do it? Yeah.
So to you six young leaders of, of this today's event, as soon as that flag's in, I'll get in touch. You'll come down to City Hall with me. We'll raise it together. We'll get it on video and we'll put it out there so the community can see it, okay? All right. Thank you all. Let's keep leading with determination and love and let's get somewhere positive. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Cahill, for such, for such kind words. I would now like to introduce our Chief of Police. I, I was asked to speak by the group for the last second, so I don't really have anything prepared other than thank you. Thank you for representing this city in such a marvelous way. This was organized by the youth of this city and by everybody to come out and support, and we support, this police department supports that black lives do matter, that people of color matter. Last, one last thing, and I'll get out of here because it's their event, is you don't have to be anti-police to be pro-racism or anti-racism be pro-police. We're all going to work together. You can be pro-police and pro-anti-racism. That's what we want to do here. No racism, but you can support your police because we've all taken a note to the Constitution and we're going to do everything we can to make this city safe and make everyone in this city feel safe. Thank you. Once again, thank you, Chief, for your words. I would now like to introduce Kitia Fisher for her words. Hello. Okay. <laughs> My name is Kitia Fisher, and I live here in Beverly, and I am a mom to two black children. I'm here today as a parent because my children are worth and deserve everything that everybody else deserves to have. I'm here with the hope. I'm here with the hope that we're making changes and my children won't have to deal with the microaggressions and systemic racism that some of us have had to deal with. I've been talking to my children since they were babies about the inequalities for people of color in America, letting them know that they're not responsible for other people's feelings and behaviors, that their brown skin is beautiful, that their hair makes them unique. Our children deserve more than anything to, than existing in a system that's designed for them to fail. I applaud you all in coming here today and taking the steps to fight against police brutality and racism. I encourage you all to take it a step further and start working on your own biases today. Read the books. Get uncomfortable. Move past the discomfort and work on your own biases. I also encourage you to buy your children black baby dolls. Encourage them to nurture them. It's not too early, it's never too early, and it's not too late. Just make the changes. Yeah. Parents and caregivers, please make intentional decisions in buying different books of writers that are of color, and take your children to diverse playgrounds and allow them to naturally form friendships. Strike up conversations with people in community who may not look like you. Get to know them. Give them a chance. Lead by example. If your favorite uncle or your best friend says something racist or prejudiced, stop them right then and there and correct them. Let them know that this is unacceptable at all times. 
stand up for those who can't. Thank you. Thank you, Kitia, for your wonderful words. It definitely made us all emotional. I would now like to give the opportunity to Taro Green to speak. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm a little nervous because uh, I didn't really prepare anything, and I did speak at a protest uh, in Salem prior to this. So I kind of want to feed off that energy. And one of the questions that I asked was, why am I here? And I know that oftentimes when we talk about what's going on, the main person who's at the forefront is George Floyd. And as much as that sucks for me, this has happened before because George Floyd was Michael Brown and Ferguson four or five years ago. And what really makes me upset and angry is when I think about the 26, now 27-year-old woman who was sleeping in bed and then murdered. It upsets me that that happened. It upsets me that her boyfriend was then charged with mur attempted murder on an officer, and that it took a whole month later for those charges to be dropped. And that happened March 13th. It's June 9th right now, and this news kind of opened up three weeks ago. Why did two months pass before we heard about this horrific event? A lot of you don't know who I am, but I am an alumni. Bevo Sev was our chant. I didn't see this coming, but I now work in a high school in Salem. Not Salem High, but New Liberty Innovation. Right. And another reason why I'm here is because of those kids that I work with. In my school, the white kids are the minority. And they're the ones who are sticking up for their friends and speaking the loudest because, unfortunately, it's the people of color sometimes who can't find their voice and don't know what to say. So when I'm here, I'm representing those kids, I'm representing those families. And it hurts me a little bit when I look out into the crowd and I see all these beautiful supporters and allies, but I don't see enough of our people here that live in this community and that help form where we are, what we are, and how we are in this place. I appreciate the words of the last speaker. She offered a lot of great ways to help because I could not at the last protest I talked at. And the reason why I could not was because I simply stated, this isn't a black problem, this is a white problem. So I'm going to share some words. And I hope all y'all know this is directed more towards white people, but I want y'all to know if you know that you're not part of this, just let it pass by. Don't get offended. Um, but these are words of a black novelist and professor, uh, Toni Morrison. If you don't know who she is, get to know her. She was being interviewed talking about Ku Klux Klan and white supremacy, and this is what she said. If the racist white person not the person who is examining their consciousness, but the racist white person, if they do not understand that they are also a race that is also constructive, it is also made, and it also has some kind of serviceability. When you take it away, if we take your race away, there you are, all strung out, and all you have is your little self, then what is that? What are you without racism? If you can only be tall when someone is on their knees or when your knee is on someone's neck, then you have a serious problem. So I echo again, this is not a black problem. This is a white problem. Thank you, Taro, for your such powerful words. I will now like to give the opportunity to my partner for this organization, Naisha Tadis, who will also be saying a few words of her own. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm a little bit emotional, so if my voice breaks, I'm so sorry. Um, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to stand here before you and speak on these matters and issues we are currently facing in our world today. 
I never thought I would be here standing before you all speaking about these matters, but God works in ways you will never and may never understand. But what I do understand is that he brought me here on this day to speak to all of you. Today, we fight challenging times. These times have tried us and broken many of us out of a mold we fit into for so long and have made us into completely different people we would have never imagined we would be today. It's time today, however, to take those changes within ourselves and make changes outside of ourselves, a change that will last lifetimes and beyond. Too long have we been fighting this opposition. Too long have people of color been seen as lesser than our white brothers and sisters. For centuries, we have been treated as lesser, seen as a possession rather than a human life. We say black lives matter because to many, even sometimes within our own circles, we disregard that as common knowledge and as common human decency to recognize black lives matter. You see, our message is, today isn't that all lives don't matter. We all know that. Again, it is common knowledge to man. However, until we fully recognize and realize black lives matter, that our black brothers and sisters are valued just the same as everyone else, we cannot say all lives matter because how can all lives truly matter when we exclude black lives every day? As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said in his I Have a Dream speech addressed to thousands in the nation's capital, 100 years later, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. To put it now, nearly 150 years later, the Negro still remains in the chains of discrimination crippled by the systematic racism present in America today. A systematic racism that places our black brothers and sisters at the bottom of the chain and puts them in harm's way every single day. At the very end of it, how many people will it take to realize there is an ever-growing issue present in this country? How many people who unfortunately become hashtags when their life is taken at the hands of police will it take to wake up and make change this country has been groaning for? We have to stay vigilant as people and remain on the rise. This is no time to be meek. This is a time of awakening, not slumber. You have to, with every might in your being, fight for what is right. I will say this, we all do live together now and have broken the chains of segregation, but I wonder, have we really? Are we still not picked apart for the color of our skin? Do we still not experience differences in treatment because of how we appear? It pains me to think people now have become so accustomed to this way of thinking that within themselves, they feel as if it is okay to treat someone differently on account of their skin, abuse them, beat them, or even kill them and take their incredibly precious life away. If only they could realize they were killing a son or daughter, a brother or sister, a mother or father to little children, a grandchild, niece or nephew, etc. If only that police officer could have realized he was killing a man who just began to organize his life and make better for himself and his children in Minnesota from Texas. If only the cops who stormed into the house of Breonna Taylor could have realized they killed an EMT on the front lines in two hospitals amid this COVID-19 pandemic. If only the McMichaels realized they hatefully killed such a brilliant young man with a life ahead of him to live. These cases that I read, uh, read of are only a few cases that have come across in recent news, and to think there are many more, even those we do not know of that extend decades, saddens and sickens me. This hate can no longer harbor within ourselves. In these present times, it is no longer a matter of your upbringing that deeply flaws your ways of thinking, but it is a matter of do you stick to your ways or do you muster up the courage to realize and say, this is wrong, and I know this is wrong in my heart, even if my parents believe otherwise. Yeah. You cannot always blame your parents for your faulty, uneducated way of thinking. Not all is to blame on your parents, but partly to blame on you for deciding even in adult years that is the right way to quote unquote be. Truly, I believe, as Nelson Mandela once said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love, for love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. Let this naturally present love living within us drive out the hate. It is time to learn how to let love to love truly, sorry, no matter the skin, no matter the religion, no matter the orientation. You see, we truly don't understand the privilege and the blessing from God himself to be here standing alive and well. We don't see that many across the globe cannot phone their mothers or fathers or sisters or brothers because they have passed on. These are privileges to be able to tell your loved one you love them and we must begin to see that. 
We must begin to see that these very actions being committed near daily are taking away a loved one from a family member's tight grasp and breaking their ever-living being. These crimes are devaluing black lives, and we could not fail to acknowledge this. We, as citizens of America, should live free, in harmony, and peace, without a growing fear of, when will we be next? We should be able to step out of our homes and be ready for the day. Never wonder, will this day be our very last? My brothers and sisters who are in the crowd present today, I urge you, continue to fight. Continue to pursue justice. We cannot just stop here. We have so much more to go. As I have seen many say, at the end of the day, when this quote unquote fades, will you continue to fight or carry on with life as quote unquote per usual? Will you continue to fight to see a better America or leave it simply at this? I urge you, go out there and make change. Your opinion most definitely matters. Vote and let your voice be heard. Accept that our system is broken and make change as an American a citizen to change that. Fix the system that has been broken for decades, for centuries. Truly, no matter how small the voice, the impact you can make within just yourself can last a lifetime. Be the ones to make change within our communities and beyond. Be the ones to want to see better days where our black brothers and sisters and white brothers and sisters can truly, without means of discrimination, live together in lasting harmony. Thank you all for listening, and thank you all so much for coming. All right, so now to end this, um, we want to take a moment of silence for eight minutes and 46 seconds in memory of George Floyd. So if we can please be silent and remember the man who was so brutally killed and wait and sit silent for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Thank you.
So to truly end all of this, um, I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. When we first started this, I never would have ever thought that so many people would turn out and support for this movement. Um, then again, you guys are great, and I'm so blessed by God to be in this community. And I feel like this community is a family, and we are, are truly a family. And I wanted to say thank you for coming and showing your support. Thank you so much. You guys are what it means to be supportive, what it means to be a true American citizen and fight for what's right. And I hope you guys recognize the change that you've made. Even just coming over here and walking with us is a change within itself. To see all these people here and to show the, the immense amount of support really means so much to us. So we want to just have some closing remarks from our organizers and just a couple thank yous. And thank you so much, really. Thank you all. Thank you all so much for coming. It really means so much to see our community here all together, um, even in such a hard time, coming together to show support for the Black Lives Matter movement. Thank you. Thank you to all of you, especially the students and the young people. I know you all are so passionate about this. I think everyone should be so passionate about this. Um, even if you're, if you're not a person of color, everyone supports everyone. So thank you all so much and continue to keep doing what's right. Once again, I would like to thank every single one of you. Um, I, would, I personally never would have thought my partner and I, and everybody else who helped us that we get to where we are today. And none of this would be possible without any of you guys. So once again, I thank you, and may you all go home safely. Before you guys go, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our speakers. Thank you to everyone who helped us. Honestly, we would have never been able to do this without you guys' help. We would have been confused and lost without you guys, and you guys really, really helped us so much along the way. Thank you for your work. Thank you for being with us and, and really believing in us that we could really, truly do this. So thank you. Um, again, may you all return home safely, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you.